Hello, this is Angela Anderson. Thanks for joining me for this acrylic painting tutorial. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to paint this dark forest river, I guess, <laughs> or stream. Uh, we're going to be doing it step by step from start to finish as part of our beginner series. We're going to be talking about values tonight, and at the end of the show, we're going to show you how to do some varnishing. Got my husband Mark with me. Hey there, everybody. He's man in chat today, so if you've got questions while I'm painting, you can ask them, and I'll try to answer. Let's get started. Alrighty, so I'm going to be using a 9 by 12 inch canvas today. This is a Fredericks mixed media canvas board, um, but really any uh, canvas uh, size would probably work for this. We're going to be doing it uh, portrait style um, to get that kind of long, moody, dark feeling with the dark on the sides kind of encroaching. It really is a neat um, image. I really liked it. So I think it'll be a good one to talk about a little bit about values and how to get that depth perception um, with it. And also we're going to be working on a little bit of water too. So that'll be a fun one. And, and like I said, we're going to be showing you how to do some varnishing. I get a questions about that all the time. So I thought I'd show it to you guys tonight. This one should be hopefully a pretty short video. Let's get going here though so it doesn't go too long. <laughs> uh, you're going to need a sponge of some sort or a large um, brush that's got some um, stippling abilities. So you know a, a deerfoot stippler here or a um, hog bristle brush that's like a large um, white. It's kind of like this material here. Something like that that'll I find that the sponges are really good for larger canvases like this because they lay down a lot of paint um, very quickly. So if you've got one of those, grab it. Um, a round brush will do for um, some of the large areas, but I think we're going to probably use a brush today. I don't think I'm going to use that one. I did um, dampen these. So they've been put in water to soak up the water, but then I've, I've squeezed them out all the way so that they're just damp but don't um, aren't sopping wet. There's no water coming out of them. All right, let's go over our colors. I've got carbon black, and this is it's spreading out because I used a fluid black it's just because we're gonna be doing some tree trunks and things. It'll be easier to use a fluid black. Um, you can water down your um, heavy body. If you've got thicker paints, you can just water it down just a little bit to make it thinner. So I've got carbon black, burnt umber, burnt sienna, yellow oxide, cadmium orange, cadmium yellow medium, Thalo green, yellow shade, uh, ultramarine blue, and then I've got um, unbleached titanium, titanium white, and some zinc white. The zinc whites, if you want to do some foggy um, effects on here, it's helpful to have it. If you don't have it, you can still use white. Um, just water it down or thin it down with some glazing medium or something like that really well. This is glazing medium down here in the corner. All right. Let's get going. So I'm really not going to have to do much drawing for this one. Um, I'm going to separate out, though, the, the river part of it or the water part of it actually um, starts almost lower than the third. So if you split your canvas into three parts this way, um, a good rule of thumb uh, for any... Uh, photograph that you're using, like if you've taken a photograph or that kind of thing, um, to use a third as your horizon line. So either down here or up here, um, you can use all of this as your, you know, uh, foreground space and just a little bit of sky, or in this case, we've got, you know, a large sky and a little bit of foreground here. Um, so we're going to be splitting this off just a little bit. So I'm just going to mark it just very lightly so they kind of know where it is and then I'm going to do my river uh, the rocks are coming out as at a slight uh, angle like this um, there is some water visible over here so it's probably kind of meandering like this but it will get narrower at the top here there are some rocks and things up in here and it's widening widening out but we are actually aren't seeing much of the wideness because of the um 
the darkness coming around the sides. It's probably been photoshopped too to make it a little bit more moody. So we've got all these rocks in here that are kind of cutting off our space. So you could just kind of do like a little zigzag um, motion and I think that that'll be good. But you really want your water to stay in the middle third-ish. Um, it's not quite to the third. So maybe if you um, say like the middle half, if you took these, um, if you split it in half here and then took that half right here and that would be where I would end that and then took it from the halfway here and to this side and leave yourself space here. So we're gonna leave a, a good um, couple inches on either side of the water and that's going to be going almost all the way up here. And that will give us that um, vignette um, kind of encroaching in on the these trees and things coming in on our sky. And then if you want to, I, I'm really not going to mark very, I don't want to have a big blue mark on my sky to mess with. But our tree line is going to do this U shape in the upper third. So we've got the lower third with the water the middle third with trees in the distance and then the upper third is going to start our sky and our trees are coming in and around and creating this kind of u-shape um, like that i don't know if you can see that but i did it very lightly because i mm -hmm. i'm gonna have to paint this white i don't want a ton of um of that in there but i, I will have a traceable for this available for those who want to have it it might be helpful. You can do this um, this first part and then uh, lay your traceable on after you get kind of the main background colors down and then you adjust them as you need to. All right, so let's go ahead and start with the white. I've got my large brush here. Really, you can use um, just any large size brush you've got. This is the 10 Bright from Princeton. Thank you to Princeton and Fredericks, by the way. Fredericks are our canvas sponsor. Princeton um, provides our brushes, so they're awesome. We love them. Um, I was using them, I've used them for years, and we've, they don't pay me. I just, I like their stuff, so mm -hmm. <laughs> it's, it's a win-win. <laughs> Yeah, but I do have a list down in the description of some of my favorite brushes from them. And um, we have a recommended brush list at the Brush Guy if you want to check that out. Brushguys.com. There's a link down in the description. And we also have different lists in our Amazon stores too. All right. All of that is down in the description. All right. Mm -hmm. Should we say hi before we start? <laughs> Hi, everybody. Hey, guys. <laughs> Hope you're doing well tonight. Yeah, and the traceable will be available even if you don't want it. Um, and it's not, yeah, I don't, I haven't done it yet. I'm, I'm going to paint this tonight first, and then I'll use this to do my drawing after I have it done. So, so sounds you know, the good. Exact one. All right, so I'm going to start with this, and I'm just going to really quickly lay this white on. Get, get rid of that blue border. And I'm going to lay it on fairly thickly. I added some water just to help thin it down. And again, I'm not adding the water straight over here to where I want it to stay um, solid. I am going to spray these with water. And I did want to spray my canvas just a little bit too, so I forgot to do that. I'm going to spray that first before you put your white down. That'll just help the paint absorb a little bit easier. This this canvas that I'm using is very smooth, but some canvases are more textured. And if you've got a textured canvas, you really do need to spray it with water when you first start, because otherwise it will just suck all the moisture out of your paints and you'll end up uh, using more paint than you need to. And it just won't get down into little cracks and crevices. Okay, so I came out a pretty good ways out from where I wanted, but not into that dark area. So kind of, keep this dark area dark. Um, but I wanted that white underneath to pr provide a, and I'm just gonna smush off that extra paint. I've got a lot of white still in there, so I don't wanna waste it. Actually, I'm gonna go ahead and use it down in my water. I might as well, we're gonna have this color in my water. This'll just 
use up what's left in my brush here. Give us some white back down here to work with. And I'm doing my brush strokes kind of side to side because that's how we'll do them later. Just kind of in case of any, really with this, it's white on white, so it's not going to matter too much. All right, so I'm going to grab one of my sponges. It doesn't really matter which one. I'm going to get just the tiniest little bit of water on the tip of it and squeeze it out. It felt a little bit dry. And I'm going to... It's okay, sponge. She'll use you someday. <laughs> Spray out my paints really well here. And I got my green. And I'm going to add it to my white here. And then I'm going to add some yellow. I want this yellow oxide because it will make a more neutral green. More of a close to my nail color green here. That's, that looks good. I'm gonna add even more white to it. I want it very pale. We're gonna build up our layers. So this first layer of green, I want almost, almost as pale as that white. Just, just barely brighter than the white. Make sense? Just working this through. You can also kind of stipple it. I don't want it. I don't want it to be too dark in places. So I'm kind of. You can still see some of that bright green in there. Okay, there we go. So I'm going to dab in and out here. And the key with sponging is to just make sure that you're turning it and keeping it so that you've got a, see how that kind of was too dark there? Um, while that's still wet, I can kind of sponge off of it with like a clean spot on my sponge here. So just kind of pull off some of that. And I also can go over some of these areas here with that soft sponge and just kind of soften up the border with the white just slightly and what that does is push that those trees back it it causes it causes it to look like the sunlight's coming through the trees and it also causes the trees to recede having the sky and your either mountains trees whatever be very close in value it pulls the eye in and um, creates that distance from these ones that are going to be in the foreground that are going to be very dark and saturated with color. Um, so it's a really nice look trick to do just to instantly give yourself that sense of depth. Okay, so I want to come up about a third of the way there. That's looking pretty good. And now that I've got kind of my first layer of trees here, I can start going a little bit darker. And what, what I was saying about the sponge is to make sure that I'm turning it and that I'm not getting any like repeat patterns. That's the kiss of death with the sponging. You don't want to have if you've got like a pattern that's happening, you don't want it to repeat in the same way um, so that your eye can tell, you know, that, oh, wait, there's a there's a pattern there. Um, that will make it look more manufactured and not realistic. So if we're trying for realism. We're wanting to stay random. That's the key. Okay, so I'm going all the way out into my dark area here. Because I'm going to cover this all up with the dark. And I just want to have this light green all the way through here. And it, it holds a lot of paint, so you really don't have to do a whole lot um, as far as like reloading. Once you get enough on your brush or your um, sponge, I mean, um, you don't have to be reloading, you know, very often. It, sh it should do this whole section here. 
And my white is starting to dry now too a little bit, so it's kind of helping too. Just make sure that your white isn't sticky because if it's sticky, then it'll kind of lift and can get gummy and stuff. So if it feels like tacky when you're doing this, then um, just back off and let it dry completely before you do anything else. Okay, so I'm gonna take this and I'm just gonna wipe it off. I've got another sponge here, so I'm probably just going to, well, I don't know. I don't think I need to redo another sponge. We'll see. I'll probably save that sponge for the dark area. I'm just going to take off most of that color. And now I'm going to get another um, color to do around um, a second layer. So first layer, very, very pale. The second layer on top will be a little bit darker and then we're going to go even darker. So, and um, the second layer will also be more saturated with color. So this first layer was very close to white. It was very desaturated, very pale. And then the next layer is going to have more of that color in there. And that's what's going to bring it forward. Um, things in the foreground or closer to us are going to be more colorful, more, um, have more variation in value and by value, I mean light and dark. So closer objects will be brighter and more obvious in the lights and darks will be right up next to each other. And in this case, in the this distance, we're not seeing any of the darks back here. They're all, it's all very washed out. Okay, I'm going over this multiple times because I know that for this beginner series, I just want to be sure that I'm making that clear um, what I'm talking about here. I know it's probably repetitive, so sorry. All right, so I have mixed up a little bit of the orange with this now this time just to make it a little bit more of that kind of orangey um, color and that may be a little bit bright. So I'm going to let's go ahead and get the unbleached titanium this time just for a different different tone. Mix that in. I need a fairly good amount of it. Stipple that sponge. There we go. Okay. I'm gonna wipe off that first little bit there. I didn't like that color. It's a little bit too much. So, and actually, I want to keep my brighter colors to the outside here. I don't want to bring it all the way in here. So I want to keep this middle section pretty pale all the way down. Well, go ahead. So do we have a uh, set number of videos that will be in this beginner series? I uh, No, not yet. I, I really haven't decided. I, I'm just kind of winging it. Um, I, I didn't really plan it. <laughs> Probably should have. Well, there were several topics that were easy because a lot of people ask the, the questions. But mm -hmm. to be honest, I think as you know, this goes on and we discover more common questions. Right. It may be good to do a video. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm enjoying having them on Tuesdays. I, it's a nice way of. Um, organizing our Tuesday videos because those are usually easier videos in general anyways. So just by kind of trying to find new things that we haven't covered in this series, it's been, I think, um, a good way of organizing my Tuesday videos. So um, we may, I feel like we're probably going to do it at least until the summer. You know, I think, I feel like we still have things we haven't gone over yet. So I don't foresee, um, it's stopping anytime soon. I'm taking my um, my cloth here and just kind of pulling off some of that color back here. Can you see that? It's mm -hmm. still wet, so it's kind of just pulling a little bit of that color off just in that middle part there. And it, if it's if it's already dry, that's fine. I just I just had kind of brought it in a little too far there. I was talking and not really paying attention to what I was doing. So, all right. Going along here, adding some of this darker green. And I don't mind. There's kind of some variation in the, in the colors. It's kind of nice to have 
some of that orange and some of the green kind of peeking through in different places. And the other thing that's really key with the with the sponge or any time you're doing any kind of stippling like this is just to not have so much paint on your um, brush or your sponge or whatever you're using that it causes a solid area. So like in here, I got a little bit um, a little bit kind of clumped together because I probably had a little extra on my brush right there. So what I can do is just go over that area with another color just to break it up a little and to keep it um, leafy and loose. Okay, so now I'm going with a little bit more green. And as I get, and you could do this with really any colors you wanted to. You could do this with flowering trees. You could do kind of pinks and purples, whatever. It would work for any color color that you wanted to do these trees in really as long as you do it in the same way and have your light color and um, blending into your sky here you can do these I would say that um, warmer colors in the foreground will pull the eye forward so you know you can keep that in mind when you're doing it that um, and by warmer colors I mean you know that like the oranges and the yellows and things um, are going to pull the eye forward. So we've got these light, cool, cooler greens in the background, and then as we come forward, we're getting these brighter colors. Now I'm gonna start with my cadmium yellow, and I'm almost going to use it straight. I've got these other colors here in my, my sponge and on this area here that I've been blending it, so I'm just going to kind of use it with what I've already got and do some brighter highlighted leaves. Again, just slightly in from where we've just been. So each time we do a new layer, we're coming in out towards the outside just a little bit more. Okay. Now what I want to do before I do anything else is do some tree trunks because we've got all this leaf and we need our tree trunks before we do our last layer on here. So I and I had my gloves sitting right there and I didn't use them. So do they work better when they're on your hand? I think so. <clears throat> they were supervising. Okay. They were like, good job. And they're like, why did we even come to the party? Exactly. Why did she wake us up from our nap? Mm -hmm. Here, let me put it on my foot. What? Put it on your foot? No. It's okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Weirdo. I'm the only one in the family to have painted with their foot. Yeah. Live, so just that we know. It's a, it, yeah. And I it probably will I don't remain that way. Yeah, I don't think it's something they need to be proud of. <laughs> it's pickle. Is he dreaming? I don't know. He, he's outside the door. Oh, he, oh he's, he's wanting to come in. I'm not sure what he wants. <laughs> I'm pretty sure he wants to come in. Spencer's door was open too. All right, so he's out there. <sighs> so, sure, it would be nice if somebody let me into the studio. You want me to let him in? No, it's fine. I don't care. I'm just being silly. All right, so I'm mixing a light gray here. I added a little bit of brown. This is going to be for our trees that are way back in the distance. They should be close to our white, so we'll go ahead and have a really, really light gray and then a darker gray and then we'll use black. And again, we're going to be changing the value as we go out from the center. So these trees that are really far back here, close to the bank, will be a lighter gray or close to the middle, I mean, be a lighter gray. So we can do some 
actually they kind of start in here and here's a here's a key is to make sure that as they come up towards that up towards that sky that they're light enough so I want to I'm using my liner brush here this is a long liner script liner number two from the Velvet Touch from Princeton and I'm just going to do some random little twiggy leaves and things these ones that are real far back here should be very very light And you really don't have to do a whole lot of this, so you could leave these out totally. If you don't like having to do tree limbs, you could do this just with this and just maybe just do a few little ones, you know, up in the up in the bushes and, and call it good, you know. So you could just do a few coming out from the trees. I'm just kind of varying my size some a little bit bigger than others and just making sure that I'm bringing this out far enough that it, it's going to be in my dark area here I need to bring it all the way out here so that it's in the dark area and when you're doing tree trunks like this um, I think this is the first time we've actually done this so this is important to mention what you want to do is make sure that you're going very thin um, when you lift it. So I'm going to angle it so that I can do the whole brush stroke in one kind of setting. So I'm going to start it with very, very thinned out paint. So if I don't have this paint thin enough, I can't do a thin line on here. Um, I've twisted my brush through the paint so that it's coming to a good point. And then I'm going to start out here where I want it the thickest and just set my brush down. I can press it down just a little bit to thicken it out. And then I'm just going to carefully pull it and I can kind of wiggle it side to side to make my branch different sizes. But as I get towards the top, I'm lifting straight up. I'm lifting straight up until just the bare tip is touching. This is actually a pretty long brush to use for a beginner. It's a little bit harder to control, so you might want to use a, um, a short liner. I have a, the 18 aught short liner is in the, um, that's a 10 aught. This one here is in my um, recommended brush list. For beginners, you can see the difference in the sizes of the bristles there, how much longer the one I'm using is. And the reason that I use these longer ones for tree branches is just because they last, they hold a lot more paint. So uh, you will probably have to reload this brush um, much more often than I'm having to with this one. So, and that's normal. So just kind of know that going in that you'll probably have to reload it every single branch. Whereas I, I might be able to do two or three branches before I have to reload it. It just saves me time, but you won't have to worry about that too much. Just take your time. And um, the nice thing with this is if you really mess it up, you can always go over it with a, you know, with a bunch of leaves or something. So I wouldn't stress out about it too much. But I know you will if you're, <laughs> if you're anything like I was when I was learning. it. Um, so just... Uh, this this one is again one of the kind of trickier parts of this this lesson and if you want to you can leave out these smaller ones and just do the bigger tree trunks and that would be a way to really simplify it um, so I'm I think the main thing is just making sure that your your branches are thinner where they end sometimes um, that is the thing that really trips up beginner painters is that they will have a branch that starts thin and then goes thick and then ends kind of on a thick like that and it, it's pretty much opposite what you want it to do so you just need to make sure that whatever width it is out here where you're wanting it to end is going to be the same width or thicker back here where it begins it's always going to be thicker at the where it attaches to the branch or the tree trunk or wherever and then just go back this way and make sure that you're thinning out that, 
that branch where it comes out. And sometimes you can kind of split it off so that it looks like it's got a little bit thicker, thicker because it's got a junction there or something. Got a, another one coming in front of it. And I'm definitely going to be putting other tree branches and, or, and tree things in front of it, um, leaves. That's the word. Oh my God, I am so in art brain right now. Tree branches and things. Tree things. Tree things. <clears throat> that is going next to the leaves. other stick leaves. Stick leaves, which were branches, right? Stick leafies. They were stick leafies. Yes, yes stick leafies. Mm. <laughs> okay, so there we go. So all these ones here, lighter values. Then we're going to go, I'm going to with a bigger brush now I'm going to use this too that's been sitting here with paint in it hopefully not drying I'm going to clean that out so it doesn't dry up on me and I'm going to get this kind of medium dark gray here and use it for this large one right here and it's going to go right up on the edge of this right here it's going to go straight up so I'm just going to Pull it straight up, and as I go up, I'm going to lift just a little bit so that less of the brush is touching. So I start out kind of heavy and thick, or not, you know, super thick, but and as I go up, I'm lifting my pressure so that it's getting a little thinner as it goes up to the top here. Using thin paint is really key with this. Otherwise, you won't be able to get that long, that long um, line in there. It just won't do it. Okay, so this one is going to cut off here, and it's actually going to go in front of the white, and it's actually supposed to be lighter in front here. But what we're going to—that's where we're the. Um, the fog is going to come in later when we use our um, zinc white. We're going to lighten this up, so it's going to it's going to be dark to start with. And really, you could do that with all of these ones too if you wanted to. Ooh, that branch got a little funky, so I'm going to go back over it. There we go. And then there's a couple more branches here. My brush is splitting. Okay. Really, you could do these however you wanted to. I'm just kind of going by what I'm seeing in the reference photo, but you could make this up however you wanted your branches to go so they don't have to be exactly like this one is. In fact, I think I'm going to kind of change this one up just a little bit, kind of have it going up like that. Okay. Again, making sure that my branch is thicker back here. So I'm just kind of backtracking and thickening it up all the way back. Okay. None of this is set in stone. You can always paint over any of this. So if you really, you know, mess it up, quote unquote, you can always go back over it. You, Doing a few branches there. Those, this is um, probably the hardest part of what we're doing today. So the tree limbs are always kind of a little bit tricky. Um, branches, just thin lines in general, tend to be what kind of trip people up a little bit. But it's good to know how to do it in case you want to. So that's why we're including it, even though, oh, I just stuck my hand in that. Okay, don't do that. It's fine. We're gonna be painting over this whole area. It's gonna be black, so it's not really matter. Doesn't matter. Just ignore that. Don't look over there. Okay, so there we go. We've got three different values of tree trunks in there. Oh, I did have another 
section of this tree that I didn't do. So this tree kind of branches off this way and has some stuff that goes up here. There we go. And I'm not really worried about these being kind of thicker because this is all going to be covered up with branches. So I don't really have to worry about those being thin. But the only ones that you need to worry about being thin are the ones that are kind of ending. And um, we can still cover those up a little bit. So I get my green sponge hair. Ugh, I just did it again. All right, I'm getting my... I'm getting my thing on here. I'm gonna ruin my pretty nails. I did them for St. Patty's Day tomorrow, so I don't wanna mess them up. <laughs> Cause then I might get pinched. Although I do plan on wearing a green shirt, but you never know. <laughs> I don't know who would pinch me. I gonna say, who's gonna be here with you? <laughs> Should I be concerned? No. <laughs> okay. It's going to be me and the dog. <laughs> Spencer. And they don't allow that kind of behavior at my work, so. Okay, good. I'm glad. <laughs> don't be pinching anybody, Mark. Right. It'll be trip to HR. <laughs> <laughs> Fast track to HR. <laughs> That's hilarious. You just won three days off. No pay. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right <laughs> getting the ultramarine blue here and I need more white oops wrong white it was zinc white so lots of white, very thinned out ultramarine. And I'm going to grab this. Well, no, that's dry, so I don't do that. And which brush did you so, grab? This is the Darefoot Stippler. So okay. this is where you're going to grab a stippler brush. And I'm adding the blue because I want this to be a little bit like a tealish color. So I've added the um, cadmium yellow to it. And it's kind of a bluish green, and I'm going to use it down here. That's good. But see how dark that is? So I want it I want it closer to my background color, so I'm going to get more white and just add that. And to control how much paint's on my brush, I'm just wiping it off on a paper towel here. Paper towel is your best friend when you're painting with acrylic, especially when you're doing this kind of stippling things. Really having to offload a lot of paint often to control what's happening on your brush. Oh, I thought I was your so, best friend while you were painting. That's true, you are. Well, no, you, you just told the world paper towels were. <laughs> in in some ways. No, you, you know. You, you, I can, I you, can stipple my paint onto you if you need me to. It's fine. You can't take it back. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this is um, that blue color. Somebody commented, you talk a lot to that guy. <laughs> it's like, yeah, that guy is the man I've been married to for 30-something years. So, yeah, I do talk to him. Sorry. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I mean, again, we've been married that sure. long. We we're not supposed to be talking to each other. I guess not. I don't know what their problem is but with you. <clears throat> but it's so funny. Like, it's my channel. I do what I want to do. I know if I want to talk to him, I will. <laughs> Uh, and if I don't want to talk to him, I'll ignore him. I'll ignore him when he makes me some, you know, makes some really bad jokes, awesome jokes. Bad dad jokes. Hashtag <laughs> bad, bad dad jokes. That's the rhymes. That's good. Bad dad, joke. bad dad jokes. All right, so I'm just going over the end of some of these branches. See how we're kind of blending it in, adding another layer, but that blue. Oh, is keeping even though it's just slightly darker it's still going to keep that um, feel of distance now there is like a little bit of a highlight here so 
I'm going to get my white and do some white on some of these just to kind of highlight some of these mainly in this side over here and this is on top of the trees I've just done and when you're doing your highlight um, it's often good to do it on top of your dark so I did my dark first and then I'm going to do my highlight on top um, facing the, the light so it's going to have just a little bit of that darkness underneath it and that will really make it look more realistic okay and let's do a little bit of that white on this side too there's just a little bit peeking through here in front of some of these trees and back in here okay I, i'm gonna have to do more of my dark first though because this is actually going over dark areas over here so i can't do too much more of that I'm going to wipe that off, and while I have this, I'm going to get my zinc white that I just had. It has a little bit of blue in it, but I don't, it's fine. And I'm going to, this should be dry, make sure that it's dry completely. If it's not, it'll be bad. And I'm going to go over all of this area that's in the middle here with my zinc white. See what that's doing? It's making it disappear a little bit. It's changing the value of it. Making it lighter. Blending it into my trees and then I'll leave the darker part. Just kind of blend it out here. I don't have a ton of paint on my brush so that I can, once I get, you know, halfway through here, it's pretty much out of paint. So I'm not bringing that white all the way down. Just want it to be mainly right here. I really brought it out too much right there, almost. And then you can do that to any of these tree trunks too that you want to fade a little bit. Even down here. We got a question. Okay. The person said that they've never used a Deerfoot stippler before. Okay. Is it best to be used more dry yes yes you want to keep it dry and that's why i'm you see me um really brushing it hard uh on my paper towel there to get most of the moisture out um it it works better dry and it um it works better if you don't have too much paint back back in here if you keep the paint towards the tip that um and as you're as you're loading it as you're painting with it use the very tip of the brush to um, offload the paint. Okay, I'm going to go back over now and just add a little bit more of that yellow, just a few spots. Try not to go over these branches too much because there's not a whole lot of the trees that the leaves that go over these there is a little bit right here and make sure when you do go over this that you're doing it with opaque color so that it's not looking like a ghost of a leaf you know that you can see your branch through so just keep that in mind when you're doing this to make sure you can add a little bit of white to your color so that it really covers up your branch There we go. So that's pretty good for the outside part there. Let's go ahead and add our dark. And this part will go a lot faster. So I'm going to grab the black, the fluid black, and a little bit of the green and a little bit of the orange, or actually let's use the burnt sienna. That'll be a little bit more dark. Okay, so I'm making a dark, like deep green color here. That burnt sienna and black. I could use the ultramarine blue too, either one. Uh, that's really going to be a nice dark combination to deepen up my colors here. 
And I'm going to go over this just a little bit with my lighter colors. Don't worry too much about it if you're, you feel like you're kind of losing all of the colors here along the side. I'm going over it, you know, a little bit. And again, staying about two inches or so away from the edge. And then in the middle part here, it kind of comes in more where the water is, it kind of comes in a little bit more. This, I, you can see it's kind of got a little wet. That's just my paint on my, my sponge was a little soupy there. But should be fine. This is what will really make it look realistic. I kind of have to just trust the process. And don't be afraid of going dark. I think that that's one of the things that beginners especially have a really hard time with. Is just is not using all of the values that are available you know, to you. Not going full black. Not going full dark. And not going full bright. Um, and kind of staying safe in the middle because that's those are the colors that you your eye is noticing a lot of times is those kind of mid-tone colors or some of the brighter colors and so you don't realize how much of this uh, these darker values there are sometimes and this in this case it's pretty obvious because it's you know a lot of dark obviously but um, a lot of times when you're doing paintings um, for the first time you don't realize how you don't see some of the darkest areas here so I'm using this black now and going over this just along this outside edge and really darkening up some of these and go ahead and bring it out into here a little bit in some places so I'm changing the you know I'm not going straight up and down I'm kind of creating these little areas of these branches. They come out and they leaf out in these kind of clusters like this. So they're almost like fingers coming out. And um, some of them are going to go downward. Some of them are going to be more rounded. Some of them are going to kind of come upwards. And so, you know, just kind of vary the, the direction and the angle of your leaves coming out here in sections. It's going to work really well. And don't be afraid to paint off the canvas. Yes. You know, to because the tree doesn't just cut right there. It would right. be very obvious. So you, know, you can see she's she's got paint on the paper towels below the canvas because she's yes. kind of painting right beyond it. The, yeah, right off the canvas. Keep it really realistic. Exactly. Okay, so I'm pretty happy with that. And I'm going to just have to let that dry. So before we do anything else, we just have to let that dry. It's going to take it a minute, so I'm just going to get some water on here to try to keep it from drying out in the sponge. Do the same thing with both of those. Don't try to clean it out in your water right now. It's just going to make a mess. It's probably helpful if you're using a sponge just to have a separate water thing just for them. Just, just set, set them in out of the way until you have time to clean them. So... You get a question right. also. Okay. They would like to know what chromatic black could be used. You could use, um, you could mix your ultramarine blue and burnt umber. You, we did make a chromatic black. So <laughs> we used green and burnt sienna um, and we added regular black to it. But that is another chromatic black that you could use. Um, purple makes great chromatic black with green. Um magenta with green works great uh you know any of those kind of dark greens would work the the ultramarine blue plus burnt umber is like a um is a really good dark um, gray and then you could add a little green to that to make it a little bit more green so any of those would work hope i didn't go over those too quickly but um they can watch the playback in slow motion there you go. And you'll talk a lot. A lot, a lot slower. <laughs> okay. 
Uh, let's find our water. So I'm gonna grab my, um, let me think, what do I wanna do? I want a big enough brush. Let's go ahead and do this one. Let's do the, no, I want a different one. Ooh. Ooh. I'm gonna get the eight. I'm gonna get the eight bright because I wanna be able to do fairly big areas here. So I've already got my white down. We did that first. So I'm gonna just kind of map out my black on the sides and I'm just gonna pull it from the sides here. And I'm gonna add a little bit of burnt umber down toward the bottom here. Just a little bit more color. Again, when we get kind of closer to us, um, oftentimes we'll see more detail. We'll see different colors, but in on the sides and far distance, um, you may not have as much of the colors um, visible to the eye. It's gonna be a little bit more muted. Okay, so I'm just gonna kind of draw it in like this on the sides. I'm kind of making some vague rock-ish shapes and I'm wanting to bring out this landmass down here. I'm gonna get my white here and create that same kind of gray that's like in those tree branches there. Maybe a little bit darker and we're gonna start kind of laying in. No, I want it dark, I want it pretty light. So this is what is the key, is to make sure that all of this stuff that's way far distant is much lighter. It's gonna be very close in value to one another. So all of this stuff that's on the same area, so all of this stuff that's way back here should all be very close in value to one another um, and very and lighter um, than the stuff farther or closer to us. So I'm gonna do some rocks that are very distant here in that light gray, but then very quickly, I'm gonna start going a little bit darker as we come down. And I'm just literally using the very tip of my brush to kind of draw some little pebbly shapes here. And then my darker black, I'm gonna start to kind of do some bigger rock shapes. Now the rock shapes are going to be flat on the bottom so make sure that you're doing that. You're not doing circles. And the reason I'm using this kind of squared off brush is because it just makes it easier. This brush is, is getting a little too big for the rocks. I'm gonna have to switch to a different brush for the rocks. So I'm just gonna keep on going here with the gray. I'm gonna use a lighter gray back in here to do some water. I'm just gonna kind of go back and forth here, get some of that white. light gray here. So coming out from this mass right here, there's a light area or like a darker kind of area. And then above it is just a little bit lighter area right there in the water I'm talking about. So I probably covered too much of this with the gray. I'm gonna have to go back over that with some white, but that's okay. Okay, and so I'm gonna use this kind of lighter to medium gray uh, along the sides here. Some of my rocks and my water in the middle here. Actually, what I can do though is just go over this with my zinc white and I will just like we did our trees up here to lighten it up so any of these rocks that end up being a little bit too big we can just make them smaller by or making them not big not too big any of them that look too dark can we can lighten them up later so okay 
going to get my white here. And I'm going to wipe my brush out now because I, I don't want a lot of that darker gray. I'm going to get my white here and I'm going to bring it and just back and forth over the top of that gray. And just create this kind of ripples in the water just with that light white going back and forth. Okay. And I can use just a little bit of my tree color because it's probably reflecting too. So maybe I'll use a little bit of the yellow oxide here with my grays and add a little bit of that to warm up that color a little bit. It looks a little bit too flat. So maybe get not a lot of the green, just a tiny bit of the green, but mostly this yellow goldish color. Use that in the water. See how that brightens that up? Makes it a little bit more realistic looking. Oftentimes your water is going to be reflective of the colors around it. So your sky color is going to be your water color most of the time. Most of the time, whatever your sky color is, I see some people sometimes they will do, you know, like a pink sky and then they'll do a blue water and they won't include any. <laughs> You're gonna, your sky and your water should match somewhat at least you know at least you should have a little bit of pink in the in the water if your sky's pink and vice versa you know or your it's kind of a mirror right it's, it mirrors it picks up the colors around it and also it'll pick up the colors of whatever you know it's near in the environment that it's, it's around um so the tree color in this case um the grays from the rocks the browns from the ground around it and somebody oh, said that. somebody said they don't here. they don't have carbon black only okay. marsh black so do Mar they have yeah to adjust fine. or do anything to it no no it'll work just fine no problem <clears throat> you just might have a rover land on your painting <laughs> you said burnt umber here don't listen to him it's gonna work just fine they're very, very similar. In fact, Mars Black would be my first choice for a comparison color to Carbon Black. They're very close. The old, the main difference is that Carbon Black's a little shinier when it dries. And some people like Mars Black better because of that. You know, they don't like the shine. So it's just kind of whatever you like. Okay, so I'm just kind of fading this out now. And going through here and adding this dark over the top and letting it kind of dry brush. We've done dry brushing before a little bit. Basically, we're just kind of skimming it like that. You can see it real well there, what I'm doing. So I'm doing that over the top of, you, you can't see it very well because I already got that dark on that side, but that's what I'm doing over here and just kind of bringing it over the top of my water a little bit. So I'm gonna do that from here and fill this whole area in with my black. But when it comes into my water, I'm just skimming it so that it's creating this faded effect. And I'm, it's this flicking motion that will get that look. I'm not pulling it. I'm just setting it down and flicking it towards where I want it to go. Where I want that darker color to be. Okay, and there we go. Now we're... We brought our black all the way up, and I want to make sure that where this, these trees and the water meet, that there's no separation right here. It's all basically the same value right through there. Okay, and then I'm going to get a little bit of my brown, my lighter gray here, and just... Do my rocks there in the distance just a little bit and bring them in there. And then get my, I 
think what I'm going to do is just do that zinc white over these, but I'm going to get a little bit of the white here. Go over these just a little bit. And then I'm going to put my rocks in with my smaller brush. Get my white here. I still have the darker color in my brush too, so it's kind of mixing a little bit with the black. It's not pure white here. But making sure that I'm keeping my, the main thing is just making sure that I'm keeping my, when you're doing these rivers, uh, making sure that you're keeping the water horizontal. It's gonna flatten out waters. going to balance itself out from gravity, right? So um, the only time your water is going to be curving or anything is if it's falling. But if it's, if it's you know, basically still, it's going to be flat. So most of this is, it's not a um, rapids. It's not churning and, you know, bubbling up. It's just kind of meandering through here, kind of at a slow pace, and it's all flattened out. So... Just flatten it out here and go side to side. Okay, so that's good. And we definitely need to do a little bit more in our um, rocks. I think the rocks will help. I'm going to bring this darker color through the middle here. Because there's kind of a darker area right there. And just make sure that I've got, this is that burnt umber with the black here and the white. Just make sure that on the sides of my water, I've got a little bit of that darker color transitioning before it goes all the way to the black. So, and I do want it to do this snaking thing, but I'm, I'll do that with my rocks. So let's do the rocks. So we're an hour in, that's not too bad. I actually thought it was longer than that, so I'm not doing too bad. Um, You're doing great. Thanks. <laughs> and looking. <laughs> All right, I'm not going to do my zinc white yet. Um, no comment. <laughs> <laughs> Don't talk to that man. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Don't call HR on me. All right. All right, so I'm going to do my rocks here. I've got my number four bright here and there's a quite a large one right here so leaving a little bit of space between these rocks back here and making sure that these are all going to be dark so they kind of all blend in which here. brush is that this is the four bright i literally just said that okay well somebody asked in chat so i'm gonna blame, <laughs> I'm gonna blame it on them <laughs> Because obviously they weren't paying attention either. <laughs> At least two of us. <laughs> Happens every show. That's the only reason why I said that. <laughs> I, th I like to tease Mark. I'm not making fun of anybody. So I trust me. I've been in chats like this. The, the Tried to listen and chat at the same time is almost impossible. I think they set me up. I get it. Yeah, they were like... They were like... They waited until I said it, and then they asked you. Sometimes they ask me to zoom in, and then you go off camera and I get in trouble. <laughs> no. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, They're still. all good people. Oh, yeah, for sure. We're joking. We like to tease. We're definitely no, no worries. If they've been with us long enough, they know. Yeah, hopefully that's what all of our unusual think I'm mad or something. Right. All of our <laughs> unusual suspects know the difference. Yeah, exactly. All right. So doing these little rocks farther away. Little rock. Ha. Oh. Arkansas joke. No, <laughs> that was not an uh, intended pun. I wish I'd thought of it, but did not. Um, small rocks, I'm going to use the edge of my brush here just to do them, and I'm pulling them slightly sideways so they have a flat bottom. Like that. 
and then there's this big rock here now so on the bigger rocks I've kind of created like a lighter gray I did I did like three three colors of gray in here so there's just a little bit of a variation in in the colors so there's kind of a the lighter gray that we already had done and then this is like a little bit darker gray that we're doing um, but not full black the full black is like off to the sides here and then there's some areas right here where I'm gonna skim skim down where the sun is catching those rocks and creating a little bit of light highlights on them. Let me get a little bit more of that black. Come down a little bit right here. Do another rock. Again, make sure that my bottom of the rock is flat in my water. Got a question about colors. Okay. The person said that they got a set of paints that came with a transparent burnt sienna Oh, and transparent yeah. raw umber. Okay. So can they do anything with those so that they can use them like how you use just the normal? They're great for glazes, yes. So those are those are great glazing colors. Um, but you can't like add something to it to use it as a regular burnt Yeah, you umber. can. Yeah, you can. Okay. It it won't it may not tint as as strongly being transparent, you know, it may not um, and it it won't be as opaque, so it probably won't cover uh, other colors as well, maybe. But, um, but yeah, th the transparent colors are great for all kinds of uses. And, you know, so like in this case, if you wanted to give your trees like a little bit more of a, of a um, golden brown tone, you'd use, or, you know, orangey brown tone, um, it would look really good over this. Um, you just take that transparent color, add a little bit of your glaze to it, and um, just glaze over the top, and it, it'll it create a really cool... Um, all right, there's this one. Sorry. Really cool um, effect. It's great. And yeah, I mean, you can just try it and see how it does, you know, for mixing. Um, a lot of times those transparent colors will, you'll just need to add a, maybe a little bit of a, an opaque color to make them a little bit more effective. So just something that is in that color, the same color family that's opaque. All right, so another rock here. So I'm just, as I'm going down, I'm kind of making my rocks a little bit bigger. And just making sure that I'm kind of doing smaller little rocks around the ones that I've got and making sure that all of them are on the same plane. So I don't have some that are, you know, in different, like this one is kind of angled down here. So I'm going to make sure that it's flat with my water because my water is going to be flattening out the bottom edges of these rocks. So they should be the same angle as my water. If that makes sense. Yeah, we learned all about water leveling in your Sunday bonus video. We did. That'll be the video. That That's the painting that I'm going to be. Oh, you're going to be varnishing? So I'll show it. Nice. Or varnishing, yes. Sorry. Not glazing. I'm talking about glazing. Stay tuned, kids. Okay. Um, so I'm going to do another rock right here, closer in. I need a smaller brush, so I'm going to just switch to... Let's go ahead and use the angle brush here. Use the quarter-inch angle. This will just be a little bit easier to fit these smaller rocks here. I probably should have used it farther back. I don't know why I started with the big brush for the small rocks. That's just my bad. I'll use the smaller brush for this, please. Do yourself a favor. I don't know why I did that. Okay. I'm going to go under some of these rocks and just add a little bit of darker shadowing. Just with kind of a light. Thinned out. Black. Where 
the water's going to have a shadow underneath or behind it, you know. And then we'll add one more layer of white in here to really brighten up some of our water area, but just adding our rocks in here. So I've got another rock. Well, I've kind of gone off script now, so there's one here somewhere. Just making it your own. Yeah. Like you tell everybody, don't stress over it. No. Just go with it. Maybe there's a happy little rock over here. Exactly. You might need a friend. He's got a lot of little friends. Oh, they're happy. Yes, they're all. Can you put some like glowing eyes in the middle of the river? Okay, you, you could put some over here. Mm -hmm, okay. A couple glowing eyes looking out. And she kind of creepy like. Why not? And I'm just going slow ish for this part because I want to make sure that I'm kind of creating this zigzag motion that I wanted in my water. So I might bring out my rocks a little bit more right in that area there. We'll see. Not all of them have to be angles. They can be rounded out too, as long as the bottoms are kind of flattened out. And then just kind of adding random rock shapes to fill in the foreground just a little bit. There are some grasses up in here so you could put some grasses if you wanted to. Um, I'm not sure where this water is going off to. It's probably going this way somewhere. But there's rocks and things in the foreground that's not showing the bottom of the water. So I'm okay, going to use the glaze now. And just add some of that black over and add my shadows to my rocks if I need them anywhere. And then I'm going to use the glaze to kind of put in my stones that are in the middle of my water here. But I'll be glazing back over them with the zinc white too. water, the haze on the water is casting a glow on these rocks and making them lighter. So is this a like a, a long exposure picture or is it just? No. Because you know how sometimes they do the long exposure and the water kind of looks like a veil over right. the rocks. Right. It doesn't look like it to me, but okay. it could be. Okay, so there we go. Got our right there. Let's go ahead and put a little bit of the brighter greens and things in our trees up here. I'm going to use the deerfoot stippler again. I'm going to spray these down. Get the orange and the burnt sienna. So in this case, like you're a transparent, somebody they were asking about the transparent burnt sienna, it wouldn't be a problem using it with like orange here because the orange is opaque. 
so it would make those transparent colors more visible. I'm using some yellow. And I'm pretty much gonna, I think, stick with kind of an orange color. We'll see. I may add a little bit of green, but I think I'm gonna mostly use like orange and yellow and just add little bits of this color over. And it's so, the burnt sienna kind of tones it down so that it's dark over the top of these. So I don't want it to be super bright, although you could if you wanted to, it's up to you, whatever you want to do with your painting. So you could, I've done something like this similar that where we did like a bright red, um, red leaves with the background of the trees being very dark and it was really pretty very dramatic looking so I'm just adding kind of a light glow along the edges that are closest to the light here just a little bit and there's some large leaves here too so if you wanted to do those, you could. I think I'm just going to stipple a little bit, kind of a larger bits here, and I'm not going to worry about doing the larger leaves. I think this works just as well. And you could do it a little bit on this side too. Okay, and then I'm going to grab my yellow and my yellow oxide. Just the slightest bit of green. One kind of a bright, almost lime green, but that orange is kind of affecting it a little bit. Let's see if this is bright. There we go. I was requested to zoom in so they could see those back rocks a little bit better. Okay. That's why I was doing what I was doing. That's fine. I didn't even notice. Did you miss what I was painting? No, no, no. Well, when they first asked, I zoomed in, and then you went up high, so then I had to zoom out. But then okay. when you went to the middle section, I was able to get in so okay. they could see. So we got there. Now your glass, what your glass palette mm -hmm. has a gray backing on it. Is that did it come with the palette, or is that something else? Yes, it comes gray to make it easier to mix your colors and see your values. Okay, so the palette has a gray glaze on the back of it. Right. Okay. That's the other the other palette that I used to use was similar. It had a, it was gray matters and it had um, a it was gray palette paper. Gray is a good color for palettes, just in general, because it it's really um, good to have that neutral color underneath. It makes it easier to see your what you're mixing. Okay, so last thing is just one more layer of my green or my black or both, whatever you want to do. But I'm going to get my green here, and I'm going to mix it with this color that I just had and create kind of a mid-tone green. I'm not going to use very much of this green. So I don't want a lot of like obvious green, but I do want a little bit to help transition between the darkest darks and those bright areas just a little bit. So just add a little bit of that in. You can see this side's been done, this side hasn't. So um, I'm not going into my darkest areas, but just kind of some of the areas here where there's a little bit of the lighter colors peeking through. This will just kind of merge all of it together and make it look good. And then I'm going to do one more layer of the black. And this time just getting a very little bit right on the tip of my brush. And when I'm tapping I'm kind of 
holding it so that the butt end of it is almost flat and just tapping the tip of the brush. And that way I can control, because if I'm tapping straight down, I'm gonna get a circle, because it's a circle. So, um, but if I'm tapping with the very tip of the brush, that's how I control it. I should have mentioned that earlier, because that's really important. So make sure you're tipping the brush forward so that you're getting it getting the keeping control of it and the very tip of the brush is what's touching the canvas and you may have to layer these on top of each other a little bit to get it to cover so I'm going up and down and side to side so that I'm not getting um, repeat patterns like we've talked about with the sponge. Okay, so I'm pretty happy with that, I think. Got a good amount of the dark there. I'm gonna bring my dark in just a little bit on the bottom here. And I am, I'm gonna be glazing over this part a little bit with my zinc white. So I'm just doing this to have a little bit of the dark coming in just a little bit on the sides, far back here. And then I can I'm gonna do a little bit down here so it just looks kind of like bushes or leaves, some sort down here. Okay, we're almost done. I'm gonna get my fan brush this time. And I'm gonna get my white and get a fairly good amount of white on here, tip through. Just tap it to kind of offload it. I can kind of scrape through it and that will make sure that that tip is loaded fairly thick with paint and I'm gonna tap it now. I'm gonna tap my side to side here and I can kind of draw it too and pull with it. But this is what's gonna create those sparkles on the water. But you see, don't Don't do them too thick. Keep them side to side. But they go on top of your shadows that we did. So, got those shadows in the water. So just tap a little sparkle. And if you have it too thick, you may, you know, get it kind of globbed on there. So just kind of be careful. Don't have it too thick. Can you this slide? Really slide the painting up a little bit so I can zoom in some. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And again, I can kind of pull it side to side in some of the areas where I want more of the white. See, that's really pretty, isn't it? It gives that it looks like sparkling water on the on the keep your keep your level so just keep an eye on where your rocks what your level is of your water and make sure you're not twisting your brush to the side and keep it straight my my brush wants to curve a little bit so I'm just I have to kind of compensate for that by kind of going up and down and side to side with it a little bit so that it fills in in a straight line. Oh, I love it. Looks so good. This is what it's all about right here. These last little touches. And then we do need to do our, I probably should have done my zinc white before I did this because this is thicker. It's going to take it a minute to dry. Oh well. I'm going right up to the rocks, but not, not over them. So kind of right in front of where those 
shadow areas see how the shadow is and then we do this like sparkly on top of this shadow just to kind of set it in the water's kind of catching the light in some of these areas okay and then we can i'm going to go back in while this is drying and we'll do our highlights on our rocks so i'm going to get my um blender my quarter inch blender and get some of the white and a little bit of the brown a little bit of the gray they're just kind of making a kind of a brownish gray color similar to what we were using in our water and I'm going to hit the rocks up on their highlight side it needs to be fairly dark it's not they're not super bright so I'm just gonna hit in the top and a little bit to the side of some of these rocks and the ones back here are kind of going to be ma mainly on the top, maybe a little bit. See that? And if this brush is too big for you, you could always use your angle brush. If you use a, a brush, you can, you can still do this, but you just have to kind of hold it sort of flat. When you do your highlights and that way um, they'll it'll scrape off your brush you kind of want a scraping motion so that it skips a little bit when you put the paint on when you have a moment can you mm -hmm. demonstrate how you can uh, kind of anchor your painting hand with with your other arm somebody said yes. that they have some issues with handshaking and they wanted to know mm -hmm. how to steady okay. Yeah, I, I, you can use your, your fist and rest your, you'll have to have probably your canvas um, secured because I hold my canvas to keep it from wobbling. Um, but um, you can use your, you can either hold your wrist and use it like that. My canvas is bouncing around a little bit, so it's making it hard. But like I said, you'll, you'd have to need to, to have your canvas secured if you want to do it, it that way. Um, like a, just a small tabletop easel or something like that. Or even laying it flat, but I find that it, it wants to bounce around a little bit if you don't have the canvas secure, so. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, so there we go. We've highlighted our rocks. Now I'm going to use the Deerfoot Stippler again with my zinc white. If you don't have zinc white, just use your titanium white, but use a lot of glazing medium or a lot of water. Um, I would suggest having some glazing medium in your arsenal if you can, if you can afford it, because um, if you add a lot of water to your um, heavy body acrylics especially, if you're using the expensive paints, you really do need to have some sort of a medium, either a matte medium or a glazing medium or something like that, that will um, thin out your paints without um, making them underbind. So the, the heavy body acrylics are more pigmented than your cheaper craft paints. So that means they have less binder. The cheaper craft paints have more binder, so you can add as much water to them as you want to, pretty much. And they're not going to underbind. Um, but with heavy body acrylics, you need to be careful because they, they could lift if you add too much water to them. All right, so we're just going to start back here. And I'm going to fog up into my trees a little bit along the sides. We've already done this once, but I'm gonna go ahead and do it again, especially like up in here where I want it really bright along my tree limbs. So I'll also kind of soften up those edges of the green where the sunlight's, oops, wrong one, zinc white. Coming through. And then right in the middle here, just fog 
it's really kind of that mist from the water probably just like a light spray or light mist that happens make sure that you're using a very light touch and then here in the middle though these rocks are very light so I'm gonna kind of go over them pretty heavily just right in the middle right there and then bring that mist over into that dark. We already did mist a little bit a couple weeks ago, so if you missed that one, um, just using the zinc white or thinned out white here just to create that foggy effect, misty forest on our river. Good, okay, and then we can go back through now. Very last thing, um, if you need to, if you've gotten any of the white over the top of the rocks where you don't want it, you can just kind of clean that up. Um, make sure that you've got your dark I got some on this side of this one. I just needed to clean it up a little bit. Same thing right here. And I'm gonna bring that out just a little bit. That fog kinda came in a little bit too far there and maybe just add a little bit darker just a few of these down here doing some light gray reflections through my water here anywhere where the that white you know these white that fan brush can be kind of hard to control somewhat so some of them got a little messy just kind of cleaning them up a little bit adding just a little bit of a darker gray below them just to help kind of clean them up and pretty much all I need to do. I'm going to add a little shadow to the bottom of this one I missed. Notice this rock doesn't, it kind of looks like it's kind of hanging out there without any shadows. I'm just going to give these ones some shadows. I forgot to do these when I was doing them. Okay, there we go. On the top and bottom, vice versa. Okay. Okay. Very cool. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, hopefully, not too hard. I know there's a lot of techniques in this one. But I feel like we're building on the techniques we've already learned. So if you've done the other ones in the series, that's the whole idea behind this series is to just like make you um, a better painter by the end of it. You know, so we're building on our techniques. So they're getting more difficult as we go along. And that's that's the whole idea. So these ones, as we go along, will be, you know, a little bit more um, challenging and you'll learn a new you know technique but use some of the techniques that we've done before as well so um anyhow hope you hope you enjoyed this one 
Um, before we go, we're going to work on our um, showing how to varnish. I'm going to assign this really quick. So while you do that, I'll remind everybody about patreon.com slash Angela Fine Art. Traceables, bonus videos, challenge videos, $2 or $5, $10 level, all kinds of good stuff over there. So yeah, we got check it out. Yeah, and we're, also, yeah, we're, we're still kind of in the middle of the month, but as you get closer to the end of the month, um, just know it, it builds immediately and then it builds again on the first so it, that's just how Patreon has it set up. They don't do what's called anniversary billing where they bill you on the date that you sign up every month. It's always on the first after, no matter when you sign up. So um, just, you know, kind of know that going in. All right. All right, on to varnishing. Yeah. But you get access to everything that we've painted. Um, since February 2017. Since February 2017 for the different levels. So we've got... Um, You're not the talking on the mic. $5 so. level is... Uh, this is what we did on oh, Sunday. Yeah. It yeah, took us five cool. hours to get it done. <laughs> so it was a long one, but it was worth it. It turned out really good. I Definitely like not a Tuesday video. Right, Exactly. All right, so what I'm going to do for varnishing, I'm going to lay it flat. You don't want it on an angle. Um, that's number one. Number two is protect your surface. So, okay, I'm having art up here. I've got this little nifty mat that I like to use, but um, really it doesn't matter what you use, just as long as you kind of protect your table and have something underneath that it won't stick to because it will get around the sides and it can end up sticking to your table and then you'll tear. It's not good. So, okay, there we go. I need to move these into my water here to get them out of the way. And <clears throat> I do need to have my brush wet, but I will. I don't want to dip into water. that whip. Huh? Um, I think I should be able to spray it. I'm just going to spray it. So uh, I want to talk about brushes for varnishing at first. So um, you'll want a, a large, I've got two different sizes here, um, the two inch and a three inch. Um, three inches is the size that I use the most often. Um, two inches are good for smaller canvases, but you want a brush that's got a fairly good snap, but is very soft. So um, this is the brush that I used for quite a while, but it's I've ruined it because I left the varnish in it too long. So I would say have one brush that you buy, buy a good one and just use it only for your varnishing. And you want to varnish because acrylics are sticky. And so if you do not varnish them, they will pick up dust and things and you'll have a hard time getting it off if you haven't protected your paint. Um, and like we talked about just a minute ago, if you have any paint that is underbound, that did not, um, that maybe had too much water added to it or something like that, that if you go to wash, wash it off, it could lift off your paint even years later. Um, so it's really good idea. I, I would highly recommend uh, covering it with um, at least one coat or two. I use isolation coat. First, that's a new product that Golden just put out that I really love. It's super easy to put on. Um, for years, I used to just use this. This is called Gloss Medium and Varnish from Li Liquitex. And um, I would just use this. But this can be a little bit tricky to use in it. You have to put it on quick. It dries pretty quickly, so you have to put it on pretty fast. So I really haven't been using that one very often. I've been using the isolation coat. It feels like it, it just gives me a little bit longer to dry. And then um, you can use a varnish over the top. The difference is the isolation coat is basically just polymer. And then the, um, I believe that's what I understand it is. And I'm not really 100% sure now that I said that. Um but the varnish is actually the removable layer. So varnish is actually meant to be removed if it gets um, like cigarette smoke or, you know, aged just, you know, 100 years from now or something. If it ever needed to be removed to be cleaned, um, those old, old 
like oil paintings and things that you see um, in museums, what they do is they remove the varnish very carefully with Q-tips and, um, and then they reapply the varnish um, on top of it. So this is removable, this is not. So what this does is protect your canvas completely um, so that you can varnish over it and if it ever needed to be removed, this is protecting your paint. So um, what you want to do is um, I just roll it to to mix it. So I just kind of gently roll it. You can use a stick to stir it. But when I was rolling this one earlier, this was my larger one. I bought a smaller one just to have a second one. But I, I don't know if you can see that. I dropped it and it created all these little bubbles. You can see the bubbles inside there, I think. So you, th I can't use this right now. I have to wait for those bubbles to settle. Otherwise, the um, they could foam up on my um, canvas cause issues. So fortunately, I had another one because I did. I was planning on doing this earlier and I like dropped it. I was like, oh, dang it. <laughs> so be gentle with it. You don't have to agitate it a lot. You don't want to introduce a lot of air into it because it'll just take a forever for those bubbles to settle. Um, so I'm just going to pour it out into a little thing. Sometimes I pour it straight onto my canvas. If I have a really large canvas, that's what I would do. Like I would just go across, um, and all the way to the side, side to side with it. I mean, I've, <laughs> I've had to lay them out on, um, my easel flat before I've had to put tables in, <laughs> you know, when you use a larger canvases, it can be really challenging to varnish um, and you have to move quickly. So I usually would just pour it on and use my brush and just very quickly like spread it out in different directions. And so, um, you know, if I've got a line of varnish going across here and across here, I would pull it this way first, just all the way through to kind of try to get it mixed in and then pull it across this way once or twice. The main thing with acrylic, uh, with varnishing is that you do not want to over blend it. You don't want to be going like this with it because that's introducing air and it'll foam it. It'll cause foaming and bubbles and then it'll dry, it'll dry with like a little haze. So um, you want to brush it as little as possible. That's really key. So having a really good brush that's slightly stiff but soft is really important. The softness is what causes it to not show your brush strokes, but the firmness is what allows it to kind of be pushed around a little bit. So um, the red line one's uh, the new one from Princeton that I've been using. I really, really like it. Um, it's got um, just kind of the right snap. You should be able to, you know, flick it and it should like, you could should hear it, you know. It, it wants to stay where you're putting it, but it's super soft. So it's gonna, it's not gonna show my lines. And as I'm putting this on, I'm gonna hold it almost flat to the canvas so that I'm getting as much of the brush, the brush in contact with it as possible to smooth it out as I go. So I'm first going to be laying it, I'm, I'm telling you ahead of time so that I'm not gonna explain it while I do it because I have to move very quickly when I'm actually doing it. So I'm going to pick up the varnish and I'm gonna pull, lay it on pretty quickly onto my canvas where I want it and just go ahead. And this one is fairly large, so I'm just gonna go ahead and try to do the whole thing in one setting. On the larger canvases, I would do like one part and while this is still wet, I would introduce the next part or pour more out and, and introduce it and try to make sure that those seams don't dry before. That's the tricky part is you don't want this part that you've been working on to dry before you introduce the next part because then you'll have a line across your, your painting and that I've done that, been there, done that. It's not fun. So, um, so mainly, and then before you start, just make sure that it's really dry. So don't, don't do this the day after you paint it. Wait a couple of days. It's been two days now since I painted this, so it's plenty cured. Um, it takes a couple of days, uh, 24 hours-ish for acrylics to cure fully, but um, I like to give it a couple of days before I varnish it. So this is plenty um, cured now. The paint... Um, underneath is dry that's the thing that it can be dry on the top layer but unless you wait 24 hours it won't be dry underneath so that's what you need all of the layers to be fully dry before you do this okay so let's get going here i'm gonna i'm just doing the isolation coat today but you do the varnish this exact same way and you can do this isolation coat in two to three um, layers if you need to if you don't get enough like of a smooth 
finish on it. I've never really found this to be particularly um, finicky as far as um, having to do two layers. Usually one layer is plenty, I've found. But if you have a highly textured painting, you may want to, instead of brushing it on, you may want to use a spray because a spray um, will be a little bit easier to get down into your um, texture of your canvas. So I've wet my brush down here. Just gonna do it one more time. I don't want it to be super wet, but I do want that wetness to be all the way through so that the varnish doesn't go straight down into my brush. Well, the water also just allows the brush to be a little bit more flexible and accept the varnish easier. Okay, I wanna make sure also that my hands are clean because I don't wanna get that black paint on my canvas while I'm working and it will lift, it'll deposit it right onto my canvas. So I'm glad I noticed that. That varnish will make it sticky and it'll stick and anything on my hands will be right onto it. Dust, dirt, anything. So make sure your hands are clean, your area is clean, that you're in a room that's not super windy, that you're not, um, you don't have pet hair or dirt or anything else in the air that's going to um, get onto the canvas. So um, when I would do this outside, like when I sprayed it, um, I would have to do it outside. So I would do it in my garage usually and have like a window open in my garage with the screen so that the bugs weren't coming in and put it in a box. Um, and the box would protect um, it from getting like dirt and stuff. Make sure it's, of course, it's a clean box, but um, put it in a in a box and then put it up high so that you can actually work um, pretty quickly. So like on a larger canvas, you'd, you'd need it on a table so that, and, and again, flat is better. And then, um, okay, let's just keep on here. I'm talking while this is, I don't want this to dry. Okay, so I'm picking it up. I'm kind of getting it on here, but I, I don't want to inch, brush it too much because um, I don't want to introduce air. So I'm going to go across here. This actually is pretty fluid. You can add water to varnish too. So if it seems a little bit too um, thick, you can add a little bit of water to it sometimes. And usually the varnish uh, or the, you know, thing that you're using will, will tell you how much water you can add. So just kind of keep that in mind. I, I really should have the paint, the sides of this painted before I did this. I didn't think about that. Probably should have done a panel because I'm going to want to paint the sides and then I'm going to have to varnish the sides too. Oh well. So you can see I'm working from the top down, wet layer to wet layer, just making sure that I'm not, not over brushing it. So really just like a couple of times through is plenty. And it's gonna look a little cloudy when you first put it on. Um, I'm gonna come up the sides just a little bit, pull off any drips very gently. And then sometimes I'll tip it so I can see it in the light because then sometimes I can't see what the, just to see the shine and see if I see any streaks anywhere, um, if I see any areas that I've missed, any puddling, you know, you don't want any like really thick areas where the, I feel like I can go over this area a little bit. So I'm gonna take off what's on my brush here and just kind of gently go over this whole thing. It's still, it's still wet enough that I can just kind of very lightly go over it and what it's doing kind of pulling off any extra here very carefully and if it feels sticky at all do not do it because if it's sticky it will lift it'll it'll cause streaks um, as soon as it starts to dry do not touch it even if it doesn't look great even if you feel like it's it's just not quite even do a second coat let it dry um, let it dry overnight usually and then do a second coat the next day um, if you try to mess with it while it's wet it or while it's starting to dry or get tacky just like acrylic paints they get gummy it gets gummy and it'll start to stick to your brush and then it'll cause these little problems 
anybody who's done it knows exactly what I'm talking about because and I've done it too and and it's really hard to stop when it starts to do that because you want to fix it but um, once it starts to do that there's really not a whole lot you can do you just really have to kind of just let it dry and um, you can try to sand those like rough bits off a little bit and then do another coat um, if you sometimes if you catch it in time you can add a little bit more of the wet um, varnish to it and it will kind of reactivate it slightly but usually that doesn't work very well um, I I just recommend doing it as quickly as you can le as less brush strokes um, and even if you see a little bit of streakiness like I kind of see a little streak through here so I'll probably do this do another coat on this um, just tomorrow or something um, just to make sure that it is fully. Um, there we go. Now that kind of got, it's not, it's not tacky yet. So it's still, it's working. Okay. So we have a couple of questions. Okay. All right. The first right, question. Leave it. Leave it. Yep. The first question is the person says they only have polymer yeah, varnish. Yeah, I put a line through there. Sorry. Let me see if I can get that out. Okay. Very good. Very like the lightest touch there to get that line out. Okay. Go for it. Person says that they Don't only have help. a polymer varnish uh -huh. and they can't get an isolation coat. Okay. So what can they use? You can use um, a medium. So you can use um, just any acrylic medium that's clear, you know, should work as an isolation coat. You're just wanting a, like a clear layer between your paint and your varnish. So um, any kind of medium um, should work as long as you're getting a, like a smooth coverage okay. with it. Yeah. And then the second question is, where can they get that gray thing that the painting is sitting on? You know, I don't know where I got this. I uh, I think I got it at a hardware store, maybe. Um, it's a dish rack. So I probably got it at Walmart. It's it's for drying dishes. So, yeah. <laughs> That's all it is. And really, you could, like, use it just any kind of plastic liner or, um, like, a trash bag works great. So for larger pieces, trash bag um, will, won't will stick to your paint. Um, it It's... The plastic. You just need something plastic where it won't stick to. And one last okay. question. Uh -huh. They said that do you ever use a different stroke or always straight across? Um, sometimes I do it this way, and and like on my second time around, I'll do it this way. Sometimes this was this was covering pretty well, so I didn't have to go in the opposite direction here. But sometimes I will go up and down with it uh, once I get the paint all on there, and then do another side to side. Um, but but. I would do the same for the whole thing. So if I do it this way, I would do it this way for the whole way. I wouldn't do like part of it this way and part of it this way. Then you're going to get kind of cross hatching happening. But it it's uh, in this the isolation coat is slightly self leveling. So I didn't I didn't do great about I did get some streaks there. I probably should have left it um, instead of tried to smooth it out because I think I did more harm than good there. <laughs> so um, yeah, I think. I think I will. It, it probably will level out for me, though, um, and it's not super noticeable. I think um, if I do another coat, it'll even it out. And it even says that sometimes it can take two to three layers to get it evenly dispersed. And then once that's down and it looks good, then do your varnish in one coat, and that should be enough usually. And I use a UV varnish um, so that it uh, is UV protected and it will help keep your paints from fading. Go. Oh, I turned on this. I can't <laughs> I am out of practice. And this is saying to let it dry for one to two weeks before shipping. So if you are like wrapping it or something like that, make sure that you let it dry for at least a week before you wrap it. Yes. The Check. painting I, wrap. I, I asked for that. All right. Yes, I'm you did. put this in here because I do not want that to dry out. Okay. In and real quick, we had two super chats tonight. The first one Yay. was from Andy and she says, you two are the best. Aww. So thank you, Andy. Thank and you, then Andy. right after that was Patty. And then she said, oh, I didn't know how that worked. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> thank so, you, Patty. <laughs> thank you, Patty, and thank you, Andy, for your support. That's awesome. Very cool. Uh, right. One other thing I was going to say is um, use, a, use a container um, that you can toss because um, usually there's not going to – sometimes you can pour this back in, but there's 
there's so little of it, I'm not going to worry about it. But um, I would not use this again unless I cleaned all of this out really good because um, it'll flake. And so if I tried to add more after this is dry in here, this varnish is dry in here, it would flake off and get into my varnish. I've been there, done that too. So just keep that in mind. Make sure that you clean, use a clean bowl every time. And I just use these kind of plastic Tupperware that are throwaways. Um, and usually I will like take it and clean it out. Um, but I I normally, I just pour it on. I know you're not supposed to do that, but I do because it saves, <laughs> saves me time. I, I feel like... If, if I pour it thin enough that it, it kind of, I can spread it around pretty quickly, it just saves me the time from brush to canvas. So a lot of times I didn't show it that way because I don't know if that's technically how you're supposed to do it, so, but that's how I do it. <laughs> so, all right, let's put our painting from today back up here so you can see it again before we leave. And I'm just going to set that aside. I didn't do the sides, so it really didn't need this drying rack anyways. Because um, it wasn't, it didn't go all the way down the sides. But when I use these canvas boards, I really need it. Because I, I can't, I can't paint, uh, do the varnish without it getting on my surface. So it just kind of adds a little extra protection layer there. So, all right, guys. Thanks so much for hanging out with us. Thank you for our super chats. That was really sweet of you guys that mm -hmm. donated. And uh, we hope you come back and join us um, next week. We'll be, oh yeah, Saturday we're going to be painting a rose love letter. I think that's going to be a fun one. I'm looking forward to that one. Um, it's like our only colorful painting of the entire month. <laughs> it's so funny. Must have been in a mood when I picked out our paintings this month because it was funny. Went there. I must be in the winter doldrums here. <laughs> so I'm ready for some color. <laughs> Let's... Let's get, because uh, cashmere's next week. So next week we're going to show how to do cat fur and cat eyes. It'll it'll be fun. And it's actually a lot easier than it looks. Um, so we're going to start with the black canvas and work our way towards our white kitty. That, Yeah, so that'll be next week. All right, thanks guys so much. Give it a thumbs up, like, subscribe, all that good stuff. And we will see you next time. Thanks for watching.